Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've had quite a um, productive like, recent stream, um, so I've got lots to talk about today. Uh, so let's get straight into it and uh, not waste any time. So in the at the end of the last stream, I was talking about the bringing sulphur out here to um, to Realm of Shadows in my in my transport ships, which are these ones that carry these bring sulphur out. As you can see, there's still ten thousand in this one, and then they'll carry the um, the crushed naquium back to uh, back to Norvis in order to be in order for it to be processed. Now the, the problem I was having before was that there wasn't enough acid here because we'd run out of the um, uh, run out of sulfur to make sulfuric acid and so on and so on. So I've got these ships now bringing a bit more of that over and I'm quite happy I'm very happy to say that the first ship that was doing that has left all by itself. So this one presumably is completely full of naquitite. Um, or very, very nearly full, because I, I rounded the numbers a little bit. So we've got, got loads and loads on here, so that, that's great. That's working just as it should. And if we go back to rel Realm of Shadows... We've got some more on this one, and it's being and it's being used, being brought out as fast as it's being used up. So this is this is all working. What's quite notable, however, is that this pipe is very very empty. Um, that's because up here we've got a system pumping the sulfuric acid into this station here, so that as we need it in other places, it can be taken off. It can be taken off the other mines. Currently, there is only one other mine. That's the one over here that is is producing um, the naquitite at a reasonable rate. A train has just left, and we've got, got a few hundred in there already. So it's it's going it's going okay, but I think I need to have more of these. Sadly, I didn't have enough of this um, of this uh, space rail with me, so I wasn't able to expand out to to make any more. But that's going to be the next thing I do. But for now, this is dumping quite a lot of macrotite into the into the crushing system here, so we're getting a decent flow out, and it's coming through here and filling up these filling up these warehouses. So this is all all seems to be working properly, and I'm quietly confident. That over time, as we as this sort of gradually fills up a little bit, and as, as we as we have more and more ships coming out with the full 12,000 in them, these will gradually fill up a little bit to the point where this will then this transmitter and this um, combinator here will tell the next will tell future ships to not bother bringing any sulphur out with them, or to only bring out the amount that's actually been used since the last one came. And at that point, we'll have achieved actual proper stability, and things will, will just work. And this is significantly better than the system that some people were talking about in the past, where they were suggesting using uh, various mods and calculators and things to work out exactly how much sulphur I need to bring out here. Because as I do more um, productivity researches, uh, mining productivity researches, sorry, these mines are going to get more and more productive. They're going to produce more and more naquium per, um, per, per sulphuric acid. So whilst it would get it working initially, it would break fairly soon after. However, this system with the feedback means that it's going to be absolutely fine because that's what feedback does so this this now seems to be sorted and fixed and happily working as far as I can tell similarly in Kalidas asteroid belt one here I brought in I put down a second um, warehouse here that's, that sort of now fills up with um, with sulfur and then this using these um, inserters it will pass over whenever there's less than 10,000 sulfur in here so the idea behind this is there's always room for the iron and for the ice in this in this warehouse and then any extra sulfur will go into this one and will slowly be moved across to here so everything will just carry on working and there's plenty of room here it's all linked up and then again we've got the feedback system saying we want to have 15,000 at all times at the moment we've got more than that so we won't be bringing any more sulfur out here um, so we then got the uranium mines here they, they fill up this warehouse here and there's another spaceship that flies back and forth this one here the gone fission it's on its way out at the moment to pick up some more uh, some, some more uranium from the, from the asteroid belt here. So let's 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 watch this fly in. I'll speed this up a bit, of course, um, and, and and see how the whole the, the round the system works. And here we go. The spaceship arrives, and immediately this warehouse starts draining into this one. Now, because we've got all these belts have filled up because the mining drills have been running for a while um, and just have just backed up completely, it'll take a little while to get all of this into and through the warehouse. But eventually, once that's all been loaded, this this warehouse will gradually start to empty into into this one um, because the mines can't keep up with the ship with the speed I'm loading it onto the spaceship at. That, which is why the warehouse is in the middle as a buffer. Now, ideally, I'd ha yes, I'd have more of these belts going across here to pass the stuff, pass the uranium through a bit more quickly. But unfortunately, there isn't really room for that. So we'll just we'll just run it as as it is, and we'll just pass the stuff through as quickly as we can. And there you go. So here we go. It's, here you see now the this warehouse has started to run down as it gradually loads up the other one. But in the time it takes for the ship to fly over to Norvis and then back again, that's plenty of time to top the warehouse back up again. So we're 
currently about almost 20% full. And this uranium is then being taken off to Norvis, where it's being unloaded, where the, space, the spaceship lands in my uranium processing facility over here, drops it all into this warehouse, which then passes it down uh, oops, down here to be processed into um, into actual into, uh, into uranium. We're, we're cooking it up in the Covrex machines here, and eventually we'll start to have a decent a decent supply of all of the uranium stuff just around here. Uh, currently, we've we've managed to back up on the uranium ammunition, so that's a good start. And the um, uh, but but there's still quite a lot of area where the um, the uranium is still just being used up, and and and, and that needs that needs to do a bit more backing up before we'll actually have enough to. For for this system so this has been sh we've been short for so long around here that it's taken quite a long time and quite a lot of spaceship flights back and forth to fill it all up again but i feel that we are making gradual progress and eventually we'll get to the point where we will have enough uranium i don't think i need a spe second spaceship to do that so this is all this is working reasonably nicely the next step is the uh, is the actual uh, naquatite processing here on tulip and it's night at the moment so I apologize if you can't see what's going on very well here but we've got the um, the little spaceships land here they unload a load of crushed aquam in fact I'm not sure why I don't have any here at the moment we've got one that's just left here are you sitting stationary what are you doing why are you stopped we've got fuel in there we've got we just don't have a target speed set on that I thought I'd fix this problem pretty much everywhere, but apparently not. This ship is trying to not go anywhere, so let's let's give it some target speeds. That's very frustrating. Um, yeah, that isn't supposed to happen. I thought, uh, but it looks like for some reason the we've got the problem where the speed signal from here isn't being remembered by this this thing. So we need to put in another one of these with the speed signal set in it and connected directly to the inputs. So when it, when this lands in Norvis orbit, it'll get that added and then we'll start we'll stop having this problem again in the future. Let's see if we can find the other one of those. I can't at the moment, maybe it's in Norvis orbit. Yes, seriously. Oh, okay, this is waiting this is waiting for a ship to bring back come back with some crushed aquatite. So we are doing we are currently this this is the weak link of the system, but given that I've had problems with throughput beforehand and we're just catching up from that, that's kind of okay. I don't I don't mind that too much. However, Let's sort out that problem. Um, let's put in another one of these over here. And since this has been filled up with some random nonsense that shouldn't be in there, let's get rid of that as well. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to copy that to there and then um, be in this mode and then get rid of get rid of that signal and that signal. So we've got 50,000 50, speed signal and we link that up to the input as well. There we go. So now this will always have that signal being passed to it. So we won't get that problem again with this spaceship. So yes, the Naquium processing. Yes, as we said, that, that's running a little bit slower than it should be because we've we've got we've run out of spaceships to we've run out of it in Norvis orbit, so it's not been brought down here as, as quickly as it should be. But in here, I've put it, finally put in this belt that goes up here and will allow me to almost double my Naquium processing speed. The limiting factor on this is how fast I can bring in the the vitalic acid, unfortunately, and that's limited by how fast I can get glass into the system here. So I've run, an, I've run another belt along here from the rocket landing pad to bring the glass in a bit quicker and then pump it along here and ideally, hopefully this will allow me to make a little bit more of the um, of the, of the vitalic acid. But it, it's a, it is a little bit limited at the moment, but hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, manage to, we'll manage to supply enough. I do need to come over and fiddle with this again a little bit more, I suspect, just to try and get those extra, all those extra little bits, all those little speed boosts and tweaks and and improvements to the system. But as it is, we've got a reasonable system going on up here that's, that is, de is dealing with an aquarium reasonably quickly, and we've got about a thousand in there. And more importantly, back in Norvis orbit, we've got about uh, so it's 2.6 thousand in this warehouse, which is almost half, which is about half full. So that's going fairly well at the at the rate these things that this thing this stuff is used up and each time a train comes through it takes 400 away so there's a good few trains in there so we're doing i think we can say we can call that reasonably good so that brings me on quite nicely to the major thing i major undertaking i did in the last in the last uh, stream so I've, i started off by starting to build um the one of these these are material fabricators and these are really expensive um if you look at the look at the cost of that if we take we take in three major Building, mach 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 building machines and lots of uh, speed modules, uh, sort of module tier sixes. So I've put in some upgrades up here to, to build these modules a bit, uh, to build those those modules in reasonably large quantities. And apparently we've now run out, and that's so this is this is stalled, and we've we've, we've only got um, 
none of these machines at all, <laughs> which is a little bit of a shame. But when I next need some, I'll come over here and I'll, I'll, sort, I'll get that sorted out and, and bring over. At the moment, I'm, I'm still hand feeding some of the inputs for these machines. Like, um, what are we short of here? Speed module, speed. Okay, apparently the iridium plates were short of at the moment. That that one should be automated, so I need to set up... Um, I need to find where iridium plates are being made around here and just start having them fed into in, into a chest so they can be brought over here. Yes, I am doing all of this with uh, logistics bots because this was just a bit too much of a headache to not. I, I, um, I feel slightly bad about it, but on the flip side, it, it requires so many weird exotic components like these... Um, these catalogues that I didn't really want to go in and do it all do it all through through the bus system so what this has allowed me to do having those material fabricators is come over here and extend my deep space science production so previously we were producing all of these cards down here we've got deep space um, science one catalogues being made and they're being shipped out to a railway station and taken off to to, to, to be scienced as, as, as normal great that's all working fine except for this 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 stage one of the stages up here seems to be running a bit too slowly i think it's this one yeah these aren't making the um the what, what do they call superconductive cables fast enough to make these laser uh, to make these plasma pots to fill them up and so on so i need to put in some more of these machines in order, or put in some speed modules or some beacons and stuff to, to get this up to up to full speed <coughs> but that's um that's the thing I'll, i can come back and do without too much difficulty I'm, I'm not i'm not worried about that it's just a slight a slight problem where there's not enough throughput the exciting part is down here where i've carried on with the um with deep space science too so we had all of this this area here making the plasma and the ion stream we've now extended that down here to make the uh the purple cloud that's sorry the pink clouds which are um the particle streams yes and then down here into the material fabricator in order to make antimatter and that's going quite nicely as you can see this is, this is now apparently full so we're, we're doing well there and then this one allows me to make the, um, the actual annihilation data and unload it onto a belt here which is now full that's going well then down here we're, we're just making um, naquium plates here, but we need quite a lot of those which is why I put in this um, this, this uh, manufactory rather than just the assembly machines because it's it's much much faster basically and then that allows me to make the next um, the next type of deep space science card, which is the hyper lattice data. Now that takes in quite a lot of nanomaterial, a bit of naquium and data cards, but it does spit out um, a whole six every time it runs, so that's not too bad. And again, this is this is backed up now completely. Down here, we're making naquium cubes. These things are really expensive because we need we need to pull in um, the nano material, which is pretty expensive all by itself. A significant chunk of naquium plate, vulcanite block particles, yeah, and so on. And so those are all being fed out onto a belt here. Now I am going to need to, need to export these by train, I think, for um, for, the, for the actual science level, but I haven't done that yet. Um, and then from here, we can turn those naquium cubes into um, into the entang no into uh, singularity data. Now that takes entanglement data, which is a minor annoyance um, because entanglement data is one of the energy data cards. So that's being produced over here. Uh, it's quite a late one, I think. So it's being produced um, about oh, about here. Here we go. So I'm now piping these out with the, uh, the these are making them as fast as they as fast as they were before, but they're now being stolen away to be taken t put into this station over here, and then they'll be taken away to be turned into eventually taken away to be turned into the other type of into the uh, the deep space science. So this is a bit of an annoyance because it meant I had to come over here, put in an extra station, and I may well if I ever try and do anything that requires both energy science and deep space science too or later. I may need to come in and boost this production, then perhaps other productions further upstream. But we'll find out where the bottlenecks are and what, what causes problems, and just just generally see how it goes. Um, it may be at the rate I tend to, to tend to do research at, this might actually be all right. But we, we'll see. We'll keep we'll keep an eye on it. The next and final one was like that, but turned up to eleven. So down here, it's a tiny, tiny machine, but this one takes in. One, two, three, four different types of um, astronomic data cards and the Naquium cubes. And then, just to be really awkward, it spits most of this stuff back out again. So we're, we're pulling in the five different inputs. Then it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight solid outputs and a thermofluid. Um, and most of those are the, are the same same data cards just being passed back out again to go round. And some, so I've needed. So what I've done here is I put in all of these splitters, which will pull the um, which will. We'll use this to split out the data cards, pass them down here onto opposite sides of the belt, and then mer merge them with the with the supplies that are being brought in from here. And then the same with these these the other two here onto the bottom belt. Now I haven't actually programmed all of these yet because I'm going to 
make sure I, because I know I'll probably, if I'm not kept very, if I'm not very careful about this, I'll, I'll end up getting it wrong. So I thought it's probably easier to to bring all of the data cards in, get get all of these belts filled up, and make sure I've got everything right, and then start unloading onto, and then start the, this machine unloading, and just 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 to make sure for sanity's sake. I've then also got the sort of fairly normal thing. I've got the the uh, normal formatted data cards being unloaded here. I don't have an unloading thing here, so I need, need let's unload that there. That'll do. Good a place as any. Um, so yeah, we unload onto this belt. They come out here. We can get the get the the, uh, the the good data cards out here. The broken ones here and the junk ones here. And these these are all going onto the same belt because they're going to get taken all the way back over to the recycling area, um, where they'll be sorted out and dealt with appropriately over there. Um, these data cards are then being fed way up a long belt all the way up here and then fed back into this one. And I think this should work because we've got down here we see, um, looking at the numbers, for every 60, every time it runs there's a 60% chance of producing a the actual data card that I want and there's a 60% chance of producing a blank data card. So for every one time space anomaly data that's produced we'll produce one blank data card and that will then run back up here. It'll be fed in at the top here. Um, to go into this, yeah, to go into this machine, and we've prioritised it here. So, hope, so my hope and expect expectation is that they'll flow up here, they'll go into here, and they'll then be used up by this machine at the same rate, because we will be using these are used at one to one for making the annihilation data, and we're going to be using the annihilation data and the time space anomaly data at the same rate. So that should all stay balanced at least until I discover that something later on down the stream requires these data cards for a later science pack or something like that. Um, as long as that doesn't happen, I'll be okay. <laughs> but yeah, these haven't really started running because we're waiting for um, wait, waiting for the cards and things to come through, and, and they just haven't yet because we need to build up a large buffer in those stations. But I have put in another LTN station over here, which is requesting those four um, astronomic data cards that I mentioned. And over here in the astro data area, We've got, um, so two of them are coming out from down here. This is the um, micro black hole, I think. And the, no, micro, this one's micro black hole, and this is zero point energy data. They're being pulled out on a single belt here, and then filtered out down here to go into the two different stations, where they'll be loaded, loaded into the station. The train can come along and pick them up. Now, these aren't being produced quick, well, they're being produced one every five seconds, roughly. Because that was the rate I decided I want to build the science packs at, or the ca catalogs at, and so I built the, um, the memory cards, the data cards, at a rate to, to match that. So I may need to come in here and, and increase the speed these are being produced at, or it might just be that once I fill up these buffers, everything will start to work. It comes down to a lot on how much time I spend actually doing research, as opposed to just letting the, the supplies pile up again. And also to an extent on how much um, how much time I spend doing both astro and deep space science at the same time, so not letting this recover at all. So it's a fairly. I think I'm probably going to need to come back here and, and beef up the supplies a bit of, of everything that's being used here. But for now, it's kind of okay. Um, we'll we'll we should just have to wait and see how it goes. I'm gonna I'm going to I'm going to wait and see, and not start and not go looking for problems until until I until I have them. That's essentially. So this, once these, once these two start running, that will produce all four of the data cards I need to make the uh, Deep Space Science catalog too. So I'll just need to pull in some cryonite and some thermofluid. That's that's pretty easy. I've got cryonite here already because I'm using it for. Yes, it's here. It's being used for these these packs. So pull that all down here. Put in, put in some supercomputers down here. Relatively straightforward. I can then make the catalogs, put them out onto another station here, and they can be they can be taken away by a train and 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 just put into the science facilities. I was running out of space a bit here, and I don't know how much more space I'm going to need. So I put this wild kink in the um, in, in in the in the railway line here, which is a kind of ugly and a bit ridiculous. But I wanted to I wanted to move this out a bit because because I was running out of bus space here. So this is all theoretically okay. What were you doing? Okay, this is the uh, this is the yeah these the, the these are the memory cards are going to be going in here. A train will come along and pick those up as and when required. That's so that's fine. They will then eventually be taken up here, and we'll do the normal sort of things. Where up here, we'll start making the um, Deep Space Science Two. Let's reprogram that now, just because it's there and I've noticed it. Start making Deep Space Science Two. It'll fill up with all of the, all of the bits and pieces it needs. But there's 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 a bit of fiddling and shenanigling that needs to go into here. But then that'll allow me to start doing that science pack. So yeah, this is coming along fairly well. Um, and that's 
kind of that's about it really because i mean the the um putting all of all of this together was quite time consuming it took quite a lot of thinking but at least now i put it in in my normal um expandable layout so when i realize that i'm going to need a lot more naquium cubes i can just copy this and go pop 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 over here and then realize that i need a lot more um whatever whatever in antimatter probably and pop, 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 put more in up here more plant whatever I, whatever i need it's quite this is quite easy to expand and i've got <laughs> infinite space out that way in order to do so so gonna, that's going to be fine uh, i just need to sort of go in and and think about it and play with it a little bit and do th do things do things a little bit carefully in the meantime, I am making the, um, the tier 3 supercomputers over here. But they require quite a lot of what I've been calling Riddler data, because it's got the question mark on it and I'm a massive nerd. Um, and this, this, this I'm having to bring over by hand at the moment. But the, given the amount of this I'm getting through for these computers, I am quite tempted to, uh, to, decide to put this one on the bus and just bring it, bring it over by train and, and shove it down a conveyor belt like everything else. Because it's, it's a bit crazy. It takes 100, I think, for each supercomputer. Yes, yeah, 100 for each supercomputer. And I'm getting through quite a lot of them now. So, yeah, I think it's probably about time to, to upgrade that a bit. Especially as then I can come over here and I've upgraded, so I upgraded three of the supercomputers here, and that means they can now use a more efficient um, formatting recipe. That I'm looking at any eye, no, I can't search for format. So here we go, these, these are the sort of recipes you have. So before I originally I started off using this recipe, which has a 30% chance of breaking your data card, it gives it a 70% chance of giving you back one that actually works. I then upgraded to this one, 80% chance, significantly better, but still lose 20%. Now I'm on this one where there's a 90% chance of getting it back. That's pretty good. So we're only we're only wasting 10% of the data cards when we reformat them. Eventually I'll get on to um, this one, which gets me 95% of them back. Although it does require some cryonite. Um, oh, it only requires 10% of cryonite. So it's a bit again another one. It's another one of those recipes where it's a bit more complicated and you'll need to loop some stuff around. But that's fine. I can deal with that. But it does also, it gives me a 95% chance of getting my memory cards back. So that's again, is going to be another sort of, and it's a 50% saving on broken data cards. And given that data cards tend to be a thing that I'm, I'm not going to say struggle with, although that said, this is emptying pretty quickly. Um, this is still, own, this, this cargo landing pad is actually just for storage. It's not, um, we don't actually have, these aren't being brought up by rocket, they're being brought up by spaceship. But they're then fed over into the system over here. So as you can see, we are getting through it at a rate of basically a full space belt, which is... A lot. Um, we are getting through a lot of memory cards, but that's because I've just that's because I've just done a load of expansion, so that's pulled in a lot more memory cards in everywhere to, for, for that to be uh, to sort of try and to try and keep up with the extra data data types I'm making. And that brings you up to date. So that is what I've been doing in the it, that was what everything I got done in the last stream. In the next stream, I'm going to finish off the um, the science over here. There's not much of this left, as I was saying. It just needs we just need these data cards to come over. Put in the supercomputers and then go up and just plumb everything together up here. I think I need to. I think I also need to bring up um, Naquium cubes for this. Uh, yes, I do. So I'm going to need a station to drop those off. But again, these are all relatively simple things. I know. I know all. I know. I know what I'm doing here. There's not nothing too complicated in that. Um, apart from the inevitable massive expansion of all of this stuff to get it to produce everything at the right rate. So there's going to be a fair amount of expansion required, but the basic design is down, so it's going, it's, that's not going to be too difficult. So come along uh, next Wednesday to, uh, to watch me to watch me work through that. Uh, stream starts at 7.30 UK time, and I'll probably play for about three or four hours, depending on how, how excited I get, how tired I get, and how well things are going. As well as, if, if I get this done quickly, I've got I've got something uh, sort of quite exciting that I want to go off and play with, but we'll see if I, we'll see if I get this done in, in time for that to, uh, to, to be, to be uh, realistic. Also on Mondays we are st still running, still doing our uh, Minecraft streams. We are d playing Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles, which is a, a massive mod pack that essentially, in a way, kind of makes um, Minecraft a bit more factorio-y in that it start you, you get more automation, more things to play with like that, and it's a bit more it's a bit more interesting because of it. So uh, yeah, come along to see me and some friends work working our way gradually through that. Um, I've been doing lots and lots of magic. We've, we've had a big um, automated smelting system put in between streams uh, this week. So we'll go along and have a look at that and uh, and go wow over it and that sort of thing. Of course, we've got the uh, recap videos at the weekend. That's what you're watching at the moment. So these are there's a Minecraft one came out yesterday and this one today. And there'll be a GTA video on Thursday as well, pl play, playing Manhunt, which isn't, isn't I suppose it's, it share, it's still an open world game. So it shares a little bit of um, similarities with uh, Factorio and Minecraft. But we're playing a very different, much more exciting and much more competitive game type in that. 
So thank you for watching. Hope to see you in all those uh, all those upcoming videos and streams and things. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.